完美的信赖。Pretty down to the wake up call, to the sun goes down, to the making it count. Judgment is what they fight, that's your default. Just raise your guns and stand back in your past. Stay up, I want to be back. Never gonna stop. Never gonna change. Never gonna do the things you say. I run my own way to get there. Fools are calling, and I don't seem to care. In the air, no more crying. Just the opposite kind of pure clouds. Tell me the storm is coming. I'm sick of all your lies. for the second half of the double feature here on Thursday night. Whether you're joining us on Twitch or on YouTube or on Facebook Live, thank you for spending our Thursday night partying with the video, bros. Here we go. Cheers, Papa Smokes. And cheers to all of you for tuning in and staying tuned in for the second half of the program. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, you might be just watching this show on its own. So, hello, and thank you for joining us, and thank you for tuning in. And as our good friend Ed Fry says, if you're on the YouTube side, hit like and subscribe, because that does us a lot of favors right there. And if you're watching us here on Twitch, uh, if you're so inclined to follow along, also send a sub that would be awesome as well too would really appreciate any support that we can get here uh from each and every one of you but just tuning in that's a lot of support as well too and speaking of support i'm gonna say once again right above mr Papa's folks you'll see that this is a rogue affiliate sponsor that we have right up there you can scan that qr code rogue energy drinks rogue energy is a energy drink that is an alternative to what you can find in the stores if you like to be able to have that energy and last all night yeah i'm talking last all night I'm <laughs> yeah, there we i went there pop smoke you want to get on over to rogue energy check that qr code and use ole pods in the promo code so you can get 10 percent off of your order speaking of ole pods the cat's pretty much out of the bag Cats pretty much out of the bag. OLE Pods obviously is something big that's on the horizon going to be coming soon. So all the shows that you're seeing from myself, Papa Smokes, and from various others, including some shows that have not debuted and we're going to be debuting specifically for OLE Pods. It's all coming down the pipeline here very soon. So continue to stay in for more news on the release of the full-blown agenda for OLE Pods. It's coming up very soon. So we love and appreciate all of you and the support. Pop Smokes, MLW, they're right, they're, they're on the cusp of it. Court Bauer is teasing us at this point. The fusion is on the way. The new scene is up here soon. And we got Mel joining us. Melissa Wright, the anime shaker, looks like Mina Shirakawa. I wish I was up on my anime so I could understand what that means. I'm going to have to find out. But you know who knows a lot about anime the japanese wrestling and stuff that's that's mel right there you can catch her and andre doing their show over on their youtube channel uh, mel make sure can you throw your youtube channel link up on the on the comment section there so we can post it so everyone can go check that out like and subscribe i know that again our friend ed fry is going to be debuting a new show here very soon uh astrid and mel have got a show in the works uh oh stardom wrestlers yes again if you want to find out everything there is to know about stardom Reach out to Mel. She knows everything there is to know. That is that is her niche, and she loves it and does a great job reviewing it as well, too, along with Andre. Uh, I've just checked out the recent episode, and they do a phenomenal job over there. Again, a big shout-out to everybody who's doing content and uh, streaming uh, every single week, putting these things out. We appreciate every single one of you and all the support we're getting, as well as uh, seeing the wonderful work you're doing. I can't watch every single wrestling show, but what I can do is sit down and tune in to listen to my friends talking about other wrestling shows so I can find out 
what are the things that I want to be able to talk, to go back and check myself as well too. And again, Mel, make sure if you could throw your link to your channel up there for us, we'll make sure to let everybody know what that is so they can go and check out the show as well too. Uh, but Pop Spokes, it's time to talk a little MLW. Before we talk about the match we're going to review, I just want to ask you, what are you most excited about going into this new season of MLW Fusion? Do you have anything in particular that stands out that you're really ready to watch? Well, nothing the in particular all that much, but I like the way that they take a couple months off in the summertime, and then it's kind of like they hit reset on the, on the whole promotion in a way. And we've still got uh, maybe the some of the same champions or the same belts and all that, but the, the talent will be refreshed. We know of some people that aren't going to be back. We know of some new people that are going to be coming in and we'll just see how this is going to uh, be all meshed together. Will it still uh, be prominent with uh, Azteca and the, and the, uh, the luchadors and everything? I, I suspect that will s still be a strong influence. And one of the things I enjoy about, uh, MLW Fusion, but uh, uh, will such guys as Real One be back? We we don't know answers to these questions, so uh, the very first couple of episodes will uh, kind of lay the groundwork for that, for what we can uh, start thinking about for uh, what our discussions on this podcast. Well, we do know for sure that AAA is still in the mix doing some work with MLW, so we're going to see a lot of familiar faces from the AAA scene. Well, the nice thing is, is that they have opened up to working <coughs> with uh, Dragon's Gate in Japan as well, too. So we know for a fact that one of the highlighted wrestlers that was at the recent tapings, and again, I know it's been spoiled by MLW, but we're not going to spoil anything on this channel because we're going to save it for the people who haven't watched. But yes, Shun Skywalker making his debut in the new season of MLW. I'm very curious to see Shun Skywalker. I don't know anything about this young man at this point, Pop Smokes, so I'm ready to get a little bit of taste of what Shun Skywalker brings to the MLW table. Same thing with me. I've heard his name before and uh, spoken highly as a work rate guy, a guy that uh, can go 100 miles an hour and do a lot of moves uh, in quick succession, which isn't necessarily my cup of tea in pro wrestling, but uh, it'll get you talked about in today's business, that's for sure. It sure will. So we've got a, a match from the past to talk about because we've been doing this little bit of a rewind on MLW going back, checking out certain shows, certain matches. Uh, you made a great suggestion that is a great segue from our first half of the show where we're talking about wrestling legacies. And you know, I realized something, Bob Smokes, because we haven't done a full blown show at this point. And again, uh, we got do not. I want to see a full episode of Bruiser Mestino. If you know, you know. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know, but now i need to know so i got something to get check into after that but uh here here we go um i haven't done this for a while papa smokes because we haven't had a lead-in match to get me there but i'm feeling energetic Do it. I'm, feel, I'm feeling the love from all you people here so guess what at this point in time it's thursday night and that means it's time for the main event to the evening this match scheduled for one fall is for the mlw heavyweight championship of the world yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put my name in the hat there, Papa Spokes. Give me a call. You want a little ring work done? I, I got the mic skills. I'm dropping them any time of the week. I like that idea. So speaking of that MLW title match, Papa Smokes, this is with a great recommendation from you because we know we love Jacob Paw too, probably one of the best in professional wrestling today. And again, taking on one half of the Von Erich brothers, Ross Von Erich with the championship on the line. Man, is it interesting to see the way Ross was looking at this point in time. Young, you know, just that, there's that glimmer of hope in his eyes, but he stepped into that ring with Jacob Fatu. You know, maybe a little bit of fear because, again, Jacob Fatu, a very intimidating man, but this young blue chipper in Ross Vaughn, Eric, was looking like he had his eyes on the prize, wanted to grab that championship. He's got the, the blonde hair going in this one, looking really dapper, looking like the guy that everybody wants to give a call to and hang out later that night, especially if he manages to walk home with the gold, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But again, Quite interesting to see uh, the look on Ross Von Eric as he stepped into this one. Yeah, and but, you know, he's handsome just like his dad and his uncle, so it's good for wrestling, right? Like, uh, all kinds of people find him handsome, find him a good-looking guy. He's got a uh, very uh, athletic body, and he's he's uh, agile and all that stuff. So he's a perfect uh, baby face. He can do those moves that electrify the crowd, uh, 
by, you know, top rope stuff and, uh, and all kinds of agile stuff. And then here he's working against uh, one of the other, another legacy wrestler. You know, it's kind of like the two families are battling almost in Jacob Fatu, son of the Tonga kid and, and related to Afa and Sika and all that stuff. This is uh, very, very cool for all of those of us that have been watching wrestling for years and seen some of this stuff play out. And then now we've got the, the young batch, the current generation of uh, of uh, legacy wrestlers coming head to head in M- MLW. What a, what a pleasure it is to watch. Oh yeah. And this match was a pleasure to watch at the exact same time. Both men accompanied to the ring. Uh, so Ross Von Eric had <clears throat> filthy Tom Waller in his corner, former MLW champion. And on the other side of the ring, of course, Jacob fought to being led by the head of Contra. We're talking about Joseph Samuel, what probably one of the best promos in professional wrestling today. Yeah, undoubtedly, and uh, I still miss Joseph Samuel around MLW because he was really that, beyond just a manager and a mouthpiece for his faction, he he kind of felt like he was uh, part of the backbone of, of MLW. It felt like uh, he was this legitimate manager in there that, that, that belonged there and everything. It, I, I must say it hasn't quite seen the same without the uh, overlying presence of Joseph Samuel, you know, sometimes coming through as a glitch during the uh, uh, broadcast, interfering with the uh, wavelengths and coming in uh, with one of those apocalyptic promos that he always hit. I just love his work, man. I think uh, Samuel is so excellent. Yeah, he really is. And again, he plays a factor in the corner of one Jacob Fontu, but not that Jacob Fontu necessarily needs the outside factor at the same time. This is a big boy, intimidating, and one of the best, cleanest workers in the ring. His moves are smooth, but yet he hits with such an impact at the same time. Everything he does seems very strongly to keep it himself and his opponent protected but at the same time make it look like he's kicking the living daylights out of his his opponents and i've said it many times before this is a rare thing and it just goes it, it's a testament to jacob fought too and just how excellent he is between the between the ropes yeah i totally agree with you and i think another one of the things about jacob fought too and his popularity and success as a heel is that he plays it pretty real he he plays uh, if you want to call it a persona or a character, uh, the, the wrestler Jacob Fatu, I think is quite similar to what he is as a guy himself. He's for real. He's straight. He gives you, uh, he gives it to you straight up, and uh, that's the way he wrestles his matches too. And despite the fact that he's a he's a feared monster heel kind of thing, uh, the fans also uh, resonate with him and and bond with him to a certain degree because. He's that real. He's he's an actual tough guy. And I think that's what's got him over. Without actually changing who he is, it's got him over as a baby face as we lead into the new season of MLW, kind of towards the tail end of last season. But in the meantime and in between time, he was uh, definitely a very feared opponent. But again, Ross Von Eric, with that glimmer of hope in his eyes, was not going to show fear to one Jacob Fatu in this one and really took the fight to him. For a long portion of this match, there is a lot of back and forth and a lot of Ross actually getting a lot of the upper hand on the champion Jacob Fatu. Yeah, yeah, he was in tough, uh, well outweighed and outsized by Fatu. Um, Ross Von Erich was on the defensive for a, a good part of this match. He was selling and stuff, and uh, Jacob Fatu has a bunch of insane-looking offense that I, I'm always pleased when he gets to uh, do all his moves and stuff. But uh, uh, always with the uh, babyface comeback fire, uh, Ross Von Erich, He's the perfect guy for it. He has the perfect look for it. And uh, and uh, I can't remember, was this taping even in Dallas? Because that would have been interesting. I know they did a couple of sets of tapings, but uh, at any rate, uh, having that baby face heat and coming back, you know, a little hope spot, you know, he gets, he's been getting worked over for a bit and then uh, he starts to get a couple shots back and you think maybe he's going to make a comeback on Fa too and then oh. Those those right hands that Fatu does with the loud smacking sound accompanying just are so good, man. He did a couple of those to that uh, Josh Alexander and Ric Flair's retirement card, and uh, just what a it just 
making a punch one of your best moves is just so genius because it's taking it right down to fundamentals. We've all seen how wrestlers don't like to punch so much these days. It's all those forearms now, but a good punch is a, is a deadly move in professional wrestling, and Fatu's got one of the best ones. Oh, does he ever? And again, we saw a lot of that on display. Uh, I got written down here, uh, Samuel making his interference known in this matchup. Very steep. I love the the selling on the face of uh, Joseph Samuel. That that smug little look like, oh me, I wouldn't do anything wrong as he's stepping on Ross on Eric's face on the outside of the ring. I thought that was a thing of absolute beauty in this one. Yeah, yeah, Samuel's got a, a great sense of the business he's always in the right place at the right time all his spots and everything are tasteful you can tell he's uh grown up on a healthy diet of uh territories wrestling and uh psychology and booking because to me at least he he has a very very uh intimate grasp on the uh on, on the wrestling business uh, do not say him best punch in wrestling in his opinion is a tie between Brett or Lawler and again uh, I don't know if you've seen Jacob Fontu but you should definitely check him out because when we are talking about that guy selling a punch in court in terms of like definitely in terms of modern day wrestlers Jacob Fontu probably I don't think anyone can hold a candle to the way that guy throws a punch right now and it's half the reason that you know you throw him out there and get him in front of new faces like you were saying at the Ric Flair's last match card that we watched a lot of people went into that not knowing Jacob Fontu or or have heard of him, never seen him, and walked out of there a fan. And that's because he makes the simple stuff work beautifully. He doesn't have to be flashy. He doesn't have to be the guy that's doing a hundred things a minute. He is the guy that makes sure the things he does do hit with impact and they hit with perfection. That's right. Is his in ring always looks good. He I want to say he's careful because he never makes any mistakes, but he doesn't look like he's trying to be careful either. Uh, so that's done very convincingly. And then another thing about Fatu is people always talk about workers as, as if working is just doing the moves smoothly and, and, and in sequence and everything, but working in, is also working the crowd. And that's what Fatu also gets. We were just talking about his charisma a few minutes ago, but the crowd likes him, so he gets that. So he gives them little tidbits to chew on. He'll talk to the crowd, and all crowds are different. They're they're all similar, but every crowd is different. So it takes a it takes a psychology and it takes a real ring worker to read that crowd, to know what they're all about, and to have an appropriate response to that crowd. You can't teach that. That's that's experience alone. And we all can think of wrestlers, good wrestlers that connect with the crowd like that. I, I, just to use another example uh, is Ricky Starks. I like the way this guy, he, he you can see it on his face. He's looking at the crowd and listening to them. And then he, he uh, bonds himself with that crowd no matter what. And uh, yeah, it's just a thing to do. You have to get a whole bunch of experience working in front of all kinds of different crowds, but Fatu is a guy that gets that also. Yeah, he really does, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention at the beginning of the match, he does a little bit of that where he reacts to a fan saying something <laughs> from the front row and actually pulls the rope and challenges him to get his ass in the ring and step to him. But I, I don't believe Fatu's kidding for a second. If someone wants to step to him, He'd probably lay the SOB out right there and then there. Well, did you just see uh, somebody reposted a video? I think it might be from last year or a couple years ago. There's a it's a it's a fan shot video and it's showing some fans at a crowd barrier, um, you know, obviously in the front row or whatever. And one guy moves beyond the barrier, and then you see him puffing up with his arms out, and he's going to stepping up to someone. And then you see the wrestler he's stepping up to comes into the picture, and it's Jacob Fatu. And he <laughs> drills the guy, knocks him over real hard, and starts kicking him in the gut. Now the security's trying to protect the fan. And then <laughs> Jacob's got a chair, and he hits the guy with a chair and throws the chair at him. And that's one of those lessons that people need to learn. Like, even, uh, even now, uh, despite that this isn't the old days where sometimes fans did get beat up by the wrestlers with no, uh, no consequence. 
it still does happen. And if you're a fan live in a building and you you're watching the match of a of a tough guy, badass heel, and you think you're gonna show him up, it's his job. He can't back down from you. Once you do that, he can't back down because that destroys everything that guy's ever built. So if you're ever thinking of doing that or touching a wrestler or doing any of that stuff, realize that depending on the wrestler, you might be get yourself into some big trouble because those guys just can't walk away from a drunk fan that challenges them. Now nobody's ever going to take you seriously. So, uh, yeah, be very careful with that, all you live fans out there, because that guy found out the hard way. Well, us being the video bros, we're down there ringside for the PPW shows with the cameras and stuff like that. And even inadvertently, we kind of t- try to our best to stay out of the way. But these big boys come barreling through Papa Spokes, and it's it's not outside the ordinary for you and I to get pushed aside or toppled over. And I mean, we're not small guys ourselves. And I mean, those guys can lay in a pounding. And I would not want to be on the receiving end of an ass kicking from Jacob Fatu. I do not mentioning I first heard of Jacob Fatu about four years ago. Went back to find some early stuff. Couldn't find much but ready started as a tag team with a cousin or some family member i believe i believe uh if i'm not mistaken if i read this correctly and memory serves me right is that he was actually a tag team maybe with his with his old man or with i know he, he tagged with lance for a while actually if i'm yeah. not mistaken uh they were a tag team i think they even might have been the samoan swat team at that point before the yeah, faction in so. MLW. And I know that that is varied and Lance has gone on to team with uh, Juicy Finau of that same family bloodline as well too at this point, um, which has now become the Samoan SWAT team in MLW with uh, Jacob Fatu as their leader and uh, fantastic. I can't wait to see more from those three boys moving into the new episode of Fusion. But back on track to the match itself. So after all of this, I got the next spot that I wrote down was where Originally, Ross Von Eric is going for the infamous claw maneuver on Jake Fatu. Fatu reverses this and tries to go for his power bomb on Ross Von Eric. And as he lifts Ross Von Eric up into the power bomb, you suddenly see Fatu struggling because Ross grabs the iron claw in the midst of the power bomb to reverse the damn thing. I thought this was a brilliant spot. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. This was an awesome spot. And, uh, uh, both uh, de- devastating maneuvers coming head to head here. Like that Von Eric claw is completely uh, legendary in the Texas area from uh, from Ross's grandpa Fritz on down. They all used the claw because they had the way to apply it that uh, you couldn't stand it for any length of time. And especially once they got you down on the mat with the claw, they could either pin you or you would inevitably submit. But uh, Fatu knew he had to get out of this hold, and uh, they ended up just tumbling over the ropes and taking a big fall to the outside floor, maybe getting a little bit of rest in this match because uh, it, it was a big tumble, and they uh, they looked like they were tired. Yeah, and shortly after they got back in, this is when things started to get a little ugly. So uh, – we had the referee was just off to the side of Ross Von Eric when Jacob Fatu smugly throws a hip check into Ross, which then inadvertently knocks the referee down and out. I mean, completely out. Or, I mean, maybe slightly out, but he was completely out after he took an ass kick in himself from Jacob Fatu. When beat this ref, poor referee right into the corner of the ring, taking him completely out of action on this one for the time being. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the, you know that uh, with Contra involved, if the referee goes down, there's going to be some kind of monkey business, and we we're completely right about that. Uh, now Joseph Samael is going to uh, insert himself into this match, and uh, we got Tom Lawler on the other side, so uh, things are heating up in this match in a big way. Yeah, they were, and uh, again, like the heels are trying to cheat to get this victory. Again, I love the spot where, at this point, Fatu lays Ross out, and he goes for the cover before the interferences start happening, and he's he's wondering why there's no ref to count it out, and he looks over at Samuel and says, what, what the F you doing, man? You took the ref out, but you can't, you can't win if there's no referee, and I think the announcers try to say the Fatu a little thrown off that another referee had not come out to make that count at that point. That's when Samuel gets involved. And then all of a sudden, Tom Lawler comes in to even the score. The fans are excited. Former champion, the guy who lost to Jacob Fatu, gets in there. He picks up a chair. It's time to even the score. But wait, 
not quite because we have the finally the turn of filthy tom lawler so we knew to filthy tom lawler as the heel tom lawler and we've gone back to watch some of his baby face work this was the turning point where he turned on the very guys he brought into mlw he brought the von erics there and he turned on them on this very night laying out ross von eric with that chair and giving fatu the advantage that would inevitably lead to the pinfall victory retaining the championship belt in the process after doing this he leaves the ring with the words f contra and f the von eric's family i don't think tom lawler likes anybody at this point in time he is done with everybody he's had enough he's on his own to hell with everybody on this roster yeah and his actions in this match uh had huge reverberations throughout all the booking and all the storytelling that was going on for the next year in mlw partly because <clears throat> like you said he said f the von erics f contra so he's on his own but that was when he started team filthy right and started getting uh, his own faction together we saw he had a uh, dominic Garini and kevin Koo and a few other guys in his uh in his faction so this started to develop the power balance in mlw for that whole next year you know what uh, mel's comment i'm not gonna lie i hated waller when he first saw him in new japan pro wrestling and not much has changed however i expect him a lot more and appreciate his commentary skills you know what mel you're not supposed to like tom waller especially at these point times he is a filthy heel character you're supposed to hate the hate him but this guy again a former mma fighter uh, adapted to pro wrestling really well and had a great run as the mlw champion in the babyface role once he turned heel it got interesting he toes that line between comedy and serious pro wrestling quite well as we saw with his his filthy island episode which i mean as different and weird as it was pop as folks i gotta say we did enjoy ourselves watching it yeah, yeah, we did indeed. And I was going to say, Mel, if you don't like him, did don't you at least like his Daisy Duke trunks? <laughs> Gotta love those Daisy Dukes. I think those are absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, and we got, uh, of course, uh, what's uh, what's this guy? What What's this guy's name? Filthy? Seems like a guy I can't trust. You shouldn't trust him. He is filthy. He's dirty. He'll take any way to win a match that he can. But, you know, he can win a match with his bare hands at the same time. He doesn't have to play dirty if he doesn't want to. But he, he's known to bend a few rules. We've seen him pay off some referees, a few of those dirty tricks that he likes to pull. And, again, I'm glad that he's uh, been able to go and advance his career uh, heading on out to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Like him or love him or hate him as it goes. He's still filthy Tom Lawler, and I'm sure he's uh, kicking some ass over there in New Japan. And, again, uh, we we got a response to the Daisy. The Daisy Dukes are the worst. They make me cry. Like whoever's cat that is. <laughs> that, that comment of the right. night right there. That is beautiful. Again, uh, Bing crying in the background is what is <laughs> oh, is the same kind of crying that Mel does when she sees Tom Waller's Daisy Dukes. You know, somebody clipped this and sent it to Tom Waller. I think he needs to know right there. That is perfect. <laughs> But, oh, man, a lot of fun that we're having here tonight, Papas, folks. Glad so many of you were able to join and get in on the conversation. Uh, that was that matchup. And again, uh, this fusion has been kicking off. This is episode three of the show. We're going to be bringing you guys lots and lots of great things, especially with the new season kicking off. You'll be able to join us on Thursday nights to watch that. And then, again, Thursday nights, uh, they are going to take a little bit of a facelift, though, because our good friends, uh, Astro Pizarro and Cody Defoe, are going to be doing an Impact Wrestling review show on Thursday. Thursday night that we're, they're going to do shortly after us. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring you Fusion on Thursday nights, and we're also going to do a recording of Ring Respect Radio, or we're going to bring it to you live on a different date, whatever we can do to bring you Ring Respect Radio as well as Fusion as well, too. But we're going to make way on Thursday nights for uh, Astrid and uh, Cody to be able to tell you all about Impact Wrestling. And I, for one, am looking forward to watching that show, Papa Smokes, because I need to get caught up on all the happenings over in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, same here. I'm excited about that, and uh, we we need a show that covers Impact because it's one of the main uh, wrestling promotions in North America. <laughs> Defoe and the Natural, I like that's got a nice ring to it right there. That's uh, I don't think they use that as their tag names right across the screen during that show. That'd be absolutely. 
I love it. Uh, but it's going to be great to be able to share Thursday nights with two wonderful people talking about another great wrestling program. We know two companies that obviously have a good working relationship, and I'd like to see a lot more crossover between uh, both MLW and Impact as well, too, because I think that's two of the best rosters in North American wrestling to date. And I do say North American wrestling because, again, we do have a lot of great wrestling um, all across the globe. Uh, but again, Papa Smokes, that's pretty much it for this episode of Fusion. I know even Bing's telling you, hey, buddy, it's time for bed at this point in time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's uh, it's been a great show. And again, Bastard 69 coming in. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> he says, thanks for the shirt, Papa. And he, I have a new yeah. shirt. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> and again, yeah, I love it. Thank you, Ryan, for joining in. And I'll see you at work tomorrow, my man. Uh, so it's uh, been a great show, as always. And thanks to everybody for joining in. But before we leave you and part you here tonight, pop us, folks. Why don't you tell these wonderful people in the meantime and in between time where they can find Mr. Pop Smokes and reach out to you with all their wrestling questions and matches they want you to see. All right, Munson, let's do this again. I'm on Twitter, also known as elon musk's super fun land it at smokes underscore papa and then i'm on twitch at papa underscore smokes underscore he's got two socials these days does that bob smokes to so reach oh, out to him. yeah and again you know where to find me you know where to find us again you can catch us on thursday nights right here on this channel on youtube and on facebook live so thank you to everyone who tuned in to any one of those three channels do appreciate the support you can also catch me this sunday uh, on the third episode of Busting out with Chris Parrish. We are going to be joined this week by Drew Nicholas, who is somebody who works for Fightful. So it is going to be wonderful to have him on as a very special guest this Sunday on the show. Uh, Mel saying, great show, gentlemen. Ole, thank you, Mel. We love it. Uh, thank you for joining us as well, too. And, uh, Oh, I'll find you, Bobby. I know you will, man. We got to catch up. Go for a drink one of these days. Looking forward to it, Ned. Best way to spend my Thursday night all late. Thank you, Ed. Glad. I'm so glad all of you spent your Thursday night right here with the video bros. We have a great time with every single one of you. Uh, you can also check us out Saturdays on the Prairie Pro Wrestling YouTube channel as we call the matches commentary team over there for prairie pro wrestling a new match comes out every saturday afternoon so stay tuned for that and uh yeah and fightful select i i believe so again i reach out to chris parish he knows the details he'll have it all for you and keep checking the socials because the announcement's all there you'll be able to check out that episode of busting out uh this sunday and i've also got a little bit of a new thing i'm going to be trying out here papa smokes you know because i outside of pro wrestling i watch a lot of movies tv i listen to a lot of music yeah i'm a music guy you know that beats beat downs with carl carafel you know season two is coming up very soon uh so we're going to be able to uh, do a little bit of reviewing, and that's what I'm going to be bringing you guys right away here. The first episode of The Bravado with Bobby is going to be taking place here, quite possibly this weekend, as I'm going to be reviewing the new Slipknot album that's coming out, as well as the movie Don't Worry Darling. So those two things are up on my list of things to do coming up this weekend, so stay tuned. Those are going to be coming to you live here soon. And uh, then, Loli, thanks. This was excellent. Thanks. And thank you to you, too. I know you have sung our praises and gotten the word out there. Uh, tons and we appreciate it from the bottom of my heart thank you you're an absolute true friend really appreciate it. and you're all our true friends good people wonderful people love each and every one of you thanks for joining in and you know what until next thursday night stay stay safe be good to each other watch wrestling enjoy wrestling and join us every single thursday take care and we'll see you next thursday